Hello all, I'm Emmanuel Emezino, and I'm a Geospatial Analyst at Geohazard Risk Mapping Initiative. Today, we'll be discussing the effects of seasonal flooding in Kodi State, Nigeria, and how the use of Sentinel-1 satellites can be used for flood risk assessment. This presentation is divided into three parts. Firstly, a brief background on flooding in Kodi State, its consequences on inhabitants, and the gap in knowing regions which have been affected. Subsequently, the remote sensing tools, which is the synthetic aperture radar sensor, used for the special data acquisition, as well as analysis procedure, are illustrated. Finally, the information on the 2022 flood extent in Kodi State and its environs are shown in a codeless user interface format. This user interface format can be accessed via the link in this presentation and provides information on the regions, locations which were affected by the 2022 flood. This information is significant because it illustrates vicinities which can potentially be affected if a similar flooding event occurs again in the future. Koji State is situated in the north central region of Nigeria and has a surface area of over 29,800 kilometers square. It's also called the Confluence State because the River Niger and River Benue occurs next to its capital, Lokoja, as shown in this slide. Due to its location, certain regions in Koji State is prone to flooding. According to a BBC article on the October 2022, the central city of Lokoja is in one of the worst affected areas in Koji State, and residents are doing their best to cope. The image shown here shows members and neighbors crammed up in a building in order to evacuate flooded regions. The second image also shows that for the past few weeks after the event, residents move around in their neighborhood using a canoe. Numerous factors are responsible for this destructive phenomena, which usually occurs during the rainy season. The rainy season lasts between April and October, and these rainy seasons influence water flowing over the river banks of the affected area. One of the numerous factors is poor building practices, because individuals and residents build along the affected regions which occurs or affected by flooding regularly. Another is the saturated drainage systems, which is also categorized under poor building practices. Secondly, we can also mention climate change. The rising trends of uh, annual rainfall is also another factor which has increased the amount of rainfall in this region and also globally, leading to more flooding in this region. Thirdly, we can also attribute these flooded events to troublesome dams, notably the Lagdo Dam in neighboring Cameroon, which is usually overflown periodically and leads to the increase in water levels in the rivers uh, which are situated in this study area. The synthetic aperture radar, also called SAR, is obtained from the Sentinel-1 satellites and it's useful because it can acquire imagery both day and night, as illustrated in this image. The importance of the SAR sensor is its capability to obtain high resolution imagery, imagery from penetrating through obstacles such as smokes, cloud, and other opaque objects in the sky. It's also useful for flood monitoring and management as we are using in this case, and it's also useful for sea ice monitoring. In summary, Sentinel-1 with its SAR technology is a versatile and powerful tool for Earth observation, offering critical data for a wide range of scientific, environmental, and practical application. Its ability to provide consistent high-resolution imagery under all weather conditions makes it indispensable for modern day remote sensing and environmental monitoring. We go on to the attributes and 
compositions of Sentinel-1 satellites. As we can see here, the most important to point out is the sensor, which is the C1 SAR sensor, and the band used in this case, which is the VH, which is the vertical transmit horizontal receive polarization band. One might ask, why did we use the VH band in this scenario? The VH band was used because it is better for detecting water under vegetation and distinguishing land surface types. However, it is quite noisy, producing speckle noise on the obtained imagery. This is why we applied a noise filtering algorithm adopted by Guido Lemon for smoothing the spectral noise and obtaining a better final imagery which we used for our analysis. After applying the different parameters and algorithms in the Google Earth Engine platform, we were able to obtain a useful final product which illustrates regions that experience significant flooding in Koji State. Thanks to the Earth Engine app situated here, we were able to obtain a user interface which is user friendly and doesn't require code in order to inform individuals of where vicinities of higher risks are shown. We can easily illustrate this by the following layers here. The water body here, which can be clicked, shows the original water bodies in Kodi State, which are the rivers Benue and the river Niger, as illustrated here as well in the legend. Subsequently, we can also visualize using the flood max layer to see regions that experienced floods during the 2022 flooding. Now, this is useful because it can easily pinpoint regions that individuals may have properties or buildings and can easily evacuate important stuff which can be out before a similar scenario occurs in a future scenario. This is very important because it provides a straightforward information thereby helping decision makers, individuals and other stakeholders in the state. It's also important to point out that these codes and algorithms can be applied to different scenarios or different places in Nigeria that experience flooding and can be helpful to other individuals as well. All codes and maps and platforms will be added to this presentation in order to help other individuals with such problematic. Thank you very much for your time.